I've got six and a half pounds of clay. Santa. I've got, yeah, six and a half pounds of clay, and I'm going to make a, a footed cake plate. So it's going to have a pedestal, and I decided that the easiest thing to do would be to make it in one piece and throw it upside down. And it's fun. So I'm going to make a footed cake plate and I'm going to leave the base, which is the top, <laughs> thick. So it's a little tricky. It's a double opening rather than one opening because you have an opening for the top, which is the bottom. <laughs> Isn't it fun? It's much more fun. I mean, it's like being a kid again. It's like, how do I make this upside down? Um, and to think, huh? How much Six and a half pounds. Yeah. So the first thing you want to do, obviously, is just like with everything on the wheel, pretty much is center the clay. And then I'm going to go down because I want it nice and wide. The one I made two days ago, those three I think are kind of small cake plates. I, I had to get a six inch cake and I wanted to get a much bigger cake. <laughs> I didn't want to have to get the smallest cake they had in the bakery, but I did. So now I have My centered clay and it's about seven and a half inches wide right now their laughter's con contagious it's funny. they are having fun back there no you're not too loud well let's ask Barbara <laughs> okay so here we go. We're going to make one hole here, off center, and I'm going to go down until I have about an inch of clay on the bottom, and I'll stop and I'll measure this. Better too much on the bottom than too thin, because when you think about the finished form where you've got a cup basically, a tumbler type cup coming up here, and then you've got a wide base and another right here uh, at the base of the cup. It needs to be thick enough that when you trim it, it, it is going to hold and it's not going to tear. So I've got a little bit more than an inch of clay on the bottom, put some water in the hole, and I'm going to draw this out. I'm going to take it down just a little bit and out. Gee, it would be so quiet. I'm not used to that. I'm not used to quiet when I'm demoing. It's like, I'll tell you a story. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I've got this. What size is a cake? What size is a cake pan? Eight inches? Nine, nine inches? Nine. 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 So we want the cake plate to go out a good inch beyond that. So we want maybe a ten and a half. So, you know, I want to make this eleven and a half inches. You need room for icing. Oh, icing! <laughs> Decorations! Uh, what else? What are those things? Sprinkles? Oh, yeah. So you're measuring eleven and a half to where? The inside I'm just, or the outside? The outside. Yeah, the outside. So I want this to be 11 okay. and a half. And this is quite a bit bigger, wider than the other ones I've made. Okay, so now I've got all across here, I've got an inch of clay all the way in, all the way out. Okay. Um, and I'm going to take my time now and compress this just a little bit because I don't want this to crack. I don't want any of it to crack. And by the time you make these, I mean, you really do have quite an investment in, in time. And I almost never make one of anything. I made three for this 
demo, one I trimmed last night. I made them two days ago. And what I do is I throw the pieces and then after about two hours after I throw them, I'll cover them with dry cleaner plastic. Uh, and then maybe two layers of dry cleaner plastic and then I'll put one of my clay towels over the top. And the reason I do that is because it's much easier for me to dry the piece. I have a little torch if it's a little too wet to trim than it is for me to reconstitute it and 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 these are fragile when you trim them because they it's not an it's an awkward type of trimming. Okay, so I've got this half done. A lot of pieces when I do double openings, I do half and half. So um, I've got this half done. I've got this all the way out, but I'm not going to finish this until the very end because this is the most fragile part. And then now I'm going to do the stem. So I want to go down in here, make a hole. And I want to make sure that I don't go any deeper than the outside. I call this the outside, this is the inside right now. And then I'm going to open it up. See how easy this is? You can make it oh, a awesome. chip and dip. <laughs> it could be a chip and dip. It could be a big chip and dip. It could be a chip and dip. And, dip. It a, a a chip and, dip. It can, and this is exactly how I make my chip and dips, I guess. Yeah, and and yeah. I haven't made them in years because they're so awkward for storing. Mm -hmm. Okie doke. So now I'm going to just bring this up and out. What I found was difficult in making these was you can make them pretty easily, but they look kind of blocky if you don't put a nice little, um, you know, it, flare. A, a little flare. And I'll show you how to make the flare. So, and also I ended up with the stems being shorter than I really wanted. They look kind of stumpy. So, but you can see with just throwing this, how it looks rather awkward. So, I would think you'd need to keep the walls of the stem pretty thick to support the clay. Mm -hmm. So the the I would say half inch. I mean, it doesn't really a top on it. <clears throat> this is a very useful double opening technique. And you can see how I do this, and then I uh, am just very careful about, you have to think through what to finish last. <coughs> Excuse me. And so you want to think, what do I finish last? I need, I can't finish the pedestal completely first without bringing this out. So you have to think in increments. You have to think upside down and in increments. So you center it, you put the outside hole in first, bring it out, put the inside hole, bring this up, finish this part, the stem, and then you come back and you finish this last part. Because if you try and, if I finish this, and then I try to put the hole here, I'm gonna mess up this rim. You do not have to have a rim down here. So one of the things that is really, really important is having a flat uh, foot on here for it to sit. So I just use my little clothespin and I make it nice and flat. You want it to be level so it has a nice foot to sit on. So a big wide foot is good and even angled in a tiny bit. And then for the nice curve, I just use my rib. And again, you have to be very careful of the, the end so it doesn't dig in here. So I'm going to take it at an angle and bring it in here and push it. Whoops. So I'm going to twist it. And it's done, that part. Barbara, what was the angled-in part? Oh, the angled-in foot. So in other words, instead of being maybe completely level, to have the foot just 
instead of having it be level straight across, mm -hmm. angle it just a tiny bit. That's better than having it angled this way because then it's going to wobble. If it's angled in, it won't wobble. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now I've, I've pulled this out, I've compressed this, I've completely finished with the stem, and then I'm going to finish this part here. So this is actually quite a bit of clay I've got going here. And I think I'll cut some of it off. It's tricky to cut it off uh, just because I have my stem in the middle that I don't want to mess up. So I'm going to take my needle tool and cut a lot of this off. And if I were real handy, Potter, I would use this for handles. <laughs> but it's, since it's a demo, I won't do that. Okay, so I've cut it off. This is about a half an inch thick right now. I don't want it to be that thick because this I want to be sturdy for the firing and for handling. This I'm going to trim when it's flipped over. So I'm going to thin this part that's an inch right now so that it has a nice look and it sits down so the cake will sit down in it. This part here I'm not going to trim when I finish. See it? Aren't there a lot of things to think of? <laughs> this is one of the most intricate demos that I've done as far as so this I want to finish completely. So the stem is finished completely and the outside rim will be finished, except I like to carve. So, and I get into carving so much that I can't stop myself. So I have to, have to put a limit on myself a little bit there. It was cold this morning, 27 degrees. Snow tomorrow. Snow tomorrow. I know. Ah. So then the edge, I don't want the edge to be real thick, so I'm going to kind of pinch it in a little bit. And because I like to trim, um, I mean, there's a lot of things you could do with this edge. You could put some nice throwing ridges in it, and that can be decoration enough. Or, um, knowing me, and this, I leave this usually thick enough so that I can trim it. I find that coming in just slightly gives it a nice little angular look when it's turned over. So you can see the one, well, both of them, I guess, I, I uh, of the two that I did two days ago, I angled them in. I just like that look when, um, I think it sets the cake off. 